Chapter 3. The Shooting Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please. One for you and me, and one for the children. Ducks it shall be, said Mr. Fox. Bunce is best. Now do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell one of them from the other. Boggins gives off a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Bunce reeks of goose livers. And as for Bean, the fumes of apple cider hang around him like a poisonous gas. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Mrs. Fox. You know they'll be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me, said Mr. Fox. I'll see you later, love. But Mr. Fox would not have been quite so cocky had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside of the entrance to the hole, each one crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And what is more, they had chosen their positions very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from, from them towards the foxhole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr. Fox crept up the dark tunnel into the mouth of his hole. He poked his long, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed once. He moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was always especially careful when coming out from his hole. He inched forward a little more. A front half of his body was now in the open. His back notes twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. But he found none, and he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he heard, or thought he heard, a tiny noise, a soft ruffling sound, as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr. Fox flattened his body against the ground and lay very still. His ears perked. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. Must have been a field mouse, he told himself. Or some of the small animal. He crept a little further out of the hole, then further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took a last careful look around. The wood was murky and very still. Somewhere in the sky, the moon was shining. Just then, his sharp nine eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface. Mr. Fox lay still watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens! It was the barrel of a gun! Quick as a whip, Mr. Fox jumped back into his hole, and at the same instant, the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang! The smoke from the three guns floated upward into the night air. Boggins and Bunts and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole, and there on the ground, in the circle of light, half in and half out of the hole, lay the poor tattered blood say remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. Well, we got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Dang a blast, said Boggins. We shot too late. Should have let it fly the moment we poked his head out. He won't be poking it out again in a hurry, Bunce said. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. Then he said, It'll take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. I'm not sitting around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ugh, said Boggins. Now you're talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down that there hole, Bunt said. Then we'll have to have a lot, said Bean. Get the shovels. <laughs>